The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. I reviewed the first book, Aragon, a couple months ago, or sometime between a couple months ago and a month ago. I'm very bad at time. And my overall review of the first book is, it's good. It's highly unoriginal, but the fact it's written by a 17-year-old, it's a wonderful book, and I recommend people check it out as just a, hey, you like fantasy tropes? Here's all of them. But of all the rides I've taken, I like best. Oh. Oh. And that's okay, because it's executed well, and it has its own unique flair, especially as an introduction to fantasy for younger readers. I think of any fantasy book, it actually might be the best of that. Handing a kid Aragon will set them up to know what to expect with the fantasy genre, at least with more classical, trope-filled fantasy stories, which there are still lots of, and by God, there's basically been an infinite number they can go back and read. So you don't have to go watch my review of Aragon, that, that pretty much sums it up. It's good, it's a very good introduction, it serves a purpose, and it's well-written especially for a 17-year-old, wow, that's impressive. I've been struggling to even start my own book, and I can't even really get off the ground because I second-guess and hate everything I do. But the title of this video and the purpose of it is to tell you why I DNF'd or did not finish the inheritance cycle, and that actually has a lot to do with the timeline of the series. Marty! You've got to come back with me! Where? The first book came out in 2002, and I read it right around that time. I was very young, but I enjoyed it, and I thought it was really good. And of course, young little me didn't have much reference to really know it was just kind of pulling from all these different tropes, which again, is not a horrible thing. That's fine. But in the years between 2002 and 2005, when the second book came out, I became a much more avid fantasy reader. I finished miniseries, I got caught up on Wheel of Time, I read Redwall, I read Harry Potter, etc., etc., a lot of the things someone in that age would go through. And by the time the second book came out, I picked it up and my response was kind of along the lines of, ah, okay. Because I was able to see that this is really kind of nothing special in terms of bringing anything new to the fantasy genre. And my own personal taste is I always want to be surprised by an author. I want to be taking a left or right turn that really will shock me. And after putting down Eldest, I could tell that wasn't gonna really happen. I still thought I was good. I was young and I couldn't really contextualize why I felt kind of disappointed yet, my more analytical brain now understands, but I was determined to read the next one that came out in 2008. And between 2005 and 2008, I read a lot more modern fantasy, stuff that kind of raises the bar and changes for what you would expect. Things that really do subvert the classic fantasy tropes while also bringing something new to the table and establishing themselves as their own independent, unique worlds, which was wonderful. That's when I really fell in love with modern fantasy. I don't know if you can tell by looking at my channel, my two favorite genres are modern fantasy and classic sci-fi. Well, duh. It's what I spend the most time reading and what I really love. Modern sci-fi is nice, and so is classic fantasy. I have a warm spot in my heart for both of those genres as well, but modern fantasy always surprises me if it's done right, and I like how it uses fantastical elements to really examine humanity in extreme situations in a really dark, real way. That's fantastic. Historical fantasy is also something I really enjoy and like as well, a genre that has exploded recently. I love classic sci-fi for the more philosophical aspect of it. Why? Introducing new things to society and asking the question, how would this change us? What would the ramifications be? It's a very analytical genre, and I love that. I don't read it for escapism. I read it for kind of the opposite, as like a settling down, kind of looking at humanity. How would I react to this situation? And it's wonderful. Now, modern sci-fi is a bit different. Modern sci-fi continually bleeds more into fantasy tropes, and these two modern genres are becoming more and more intertwined. You'll often see the term sci-fantasy thrown around. I've also heard fantify, which... I hate. It's sci-fantasy. Let's establish that. And there's definitely good and bad with these two genres kind of intertwining. One, we're getting new ideas and concepts, which is wonderful. But yes, classic sci-fi and the mentality behind it of trying to prove a point or being really logical is dying fast. Sci-fi is becoming more character-driven and more and more embracing these fantastical elements. No! No! <gasps> but possibly yes. And I don't hate that. The Martian's great, We Are Bob, We Are Legion's great, Artemis is wonderful. There are so many interesting things happening with sci-fi, but it's really not even influenced by its classical roots. You can't find connections between like iRobot, the Foundation trilogy, Childhood's End, or 2001 Space Odyssey the movie, and what modern sci-fi authors are putting out Hardly at all. And that's very interesting to see how fantasy is now influencing modern sci-fi more than classic sci-fi, at least in my opinion. But Daniel, what does that have to do with Inheritance Cycle and why you didn't finish it? Well, 
I learned all this in the span between 2005 and 2008, at least kind of subtly learned it. I was still pretty much a kid, so I didn't have like the logical thinking it through, but I was developing a taste that reflects what I just said. And so when I picked up Brissinger, I just didn't get pretty much anything out of it. In fact, I DNF'd it. I put it down and I have not read anything in the inheritance cycle past that. I remember spending like some money on it and just being upset that I spent the money and I, I, did, I wanted it back. And I feel the need to reiterate this point. Christopher Paolini made a great series. In fact, when I reread Aragon for my review, I still maintain that's a good book and enjoyable to read no matter your age or experience with fantasy. It's just kind of a homage to classic fantasy with some modern trends influencing as well, which serves a purpose and there's nothing wrong with well. But in the end, I want a series that's going to grip me and try to tell me something, make me have to read between the lines, reread it, and really examine what's happening in the pages. A great example is what I'm in the middle of now, Malazan Book of the Fallen. Probably the king of the slog and fantasy, it is probably the least approachable series full stop in the history of fiction, at least as far as I'm aware of. That being said, I've pulled so much from those pages that the author is either inadvertently or intentionally telling the audience, and it makes everything more gripping. I'm gonna be getting a lot more into that with my Dead House Gates review, which should be up within the week. But when you're reading Malazan, yeah, it's difficult, but you can't help but feel there's kind of an elevated something more, something greater being written. The Inheritance Cycle, Eh. But I'm going to finish this video by saying Christopher Paolini did all of this when he was extraordinarily young and inexperienced, and he's apparently working on something new. And I cannot even put into words how excited I am to see what he's able to do now that he has more experience. He was able to craft an entire series when he was only in his like teens to 20s, and he's going to be coming back to it. And with this extra level of experience and someone who clearly has a strong voice in what they write, I'm fully just braced for another great author to emerge in the, either the fantasy or sci-fi genre, wherever he chooses to land in the future. And that is nothing but good for everyone. I was in the middle of editing all of this and I decided to double check some information about I've been gathering about Christopher Paolini. And it turns out uh, since I first thought of this video what, back in, uh, I think September and October, he has announced and is set to release another book taking place in the Aragon, uh, Aragon yeah, universe. So good for him. It's not book five, it's a series or it's three short stories. And then there will also be a book five. So good for him, you know, that's gonna be uh, interesting to see. And then there's also uh, whisperings and stuff like that of a uh, another book from him as well. Also, it looks like Christopher Pellini's about in a great shape. So good for him for that. <laughs> uh, and back to the video. So that's pretty much my review of the inheritance cycle, at least up to the point where I got. I think it's respectable. And especially for the age of the author at the time, it has a voice, it serves somewhat of a purpose, but it doesn't elevate anything or bring anything new, as far as I got in the series, to the genre. And that made me kind of DNF it, even at a young age, because after you read something like Wheel of Time or Redwall or even Harry Potter, your expectations are a little higher and you want to be drawn into the book a little deeper. Didn't do that for me. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. No Nutella in the background this time, mainly because I just forgot. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. Some of you guys got upset with me before that I had cash in the other room while I was editing and told me, like, let the dog in. Just so, you, uh, just so you're aware, he's been, uh, he's, been, he's been curled up next to me this whole editing process. So we're, we're good.